Um, now, now I got to get rid of this because that just popped up on my screen. Um, I, I want to start by saying that we've done, since, since the start of January, we've had, um, you know, uh, Shea Hillenbrand, who's a two-time MLB All-Star. We've had Sharon Lecter, who co-authored um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. We've had, um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm John Abank, Steve, Steve Sims on. We've had um, um, Michael Burnoff. I don't know. I can't remember. I'm sure I'm missing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We've had other people, Yvonne Delaflor, AJ Coulter, who's on here, who's uh, a rising comedian, was one of our um, speakers. We've had some phenomenal speakers. And, um, and next month, just so, just so you know, just put a plug in on that. Uh, it's a it's a, a guy named Coach Michael Burt, and Naveen may know ha, have run uh, around Michael Burt in the past. I, yes. I love Michael Burt so much that we named our co we named our dog Michael Burt, and we call him Coach. Um, <laughs> but but um, we're excited to have him. So anybody who wants to see him and be part of that, uh, we'd love to have you on that. But let me let me tell you a little bit about about Naveen, because um, uh, out of everybody that we've had, Naveen is, is and, and I will say this every time that Naveen is willing to speak to us, I will say it every single time, he is by far my favorite speaker. He's a, my, by far the person that gives me the greatest hope. It was uh, a year ago when we did the Refiners Conference and um, uh, in front of everybody, we, we, we had 900 people online and, and in person, and he chastised me and I because I had said, you know, I, I had said that this moment in time was like the, the like the, the worst day of my life. And he goes, no, 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 don't say that. And I'm like, OK. And, and it was that moment where I realized that what I had labeled as the worst day of my life, short of being married, right, because being married, having kids, having grandkids, that is always going to is always going to rank as the best day of my life but short of that what i had labeled as the worst day of my life was actually the best day of my life because it made me somebody that i wasn't and it took naveen to to bring that to my attention but why i why i love having naveen here as a speaker with us is because you know he he talks he wrote a book called Moonshots, and I'll just say this: If anybody who hasn't read this, you need to read it. I've read it four times, and I'll probably read it twenty times, and that, that's not uh, an exaggeration. The first time I read it, I thought the guy was crazy, <laughs> and, and I just and I just went if if he if I didn't know what he had accomplished, um, I I wouldn't have believed it, and. Um, and be, because of what he accomplished, uh, I took a leap of faith in believing what he said. And, and part of that is, you know, you, you have somebody who um, is, uh, you know, is doing two moonshots. He has biome, which measures the microbiome of your gut. And the whole premise is that the, the whole mantra is to make disease optional. And when we spoke last time, he, Naveen had said to me, have you done it, Tap? Have you taken the test? And, and I, after we got done with the, uh, with the event, I said to Catherine, I got to take it because, because I can't avoid the question anymore <laughs> because I kept avoiding it. And, and I'll just say that, that um, it, it was a game changer for me. If anybody wants to know what I mean by that, just ask me personally, but, but it, it changed, uh, you know, a lot of um, my health and my, my mental health, my physical health. And, um, and the only thing I would say on that is, is since you asked me if I had done it last time, I'll just say, Naveen, I'm waiting for the results of my last, my latest test. Can you get that to me faster? <laughs> um, and, and then um, Moon Express, which I know is of interest to a lot of people, and just making, um, if, I, if I remember Naveen, making uh, Moon Exploration possible again to bring resources to humanity, something 
to that effect. So, um, but with that, as I kind of, I'm going to, I'm going to go into, uh, into view mode or speaker mode here so I can, so I can see this, but, but with that, um, the reason why Naveen is, is so inspirational for me um, is because if I remember right, he came to the US with $5 in his pocket. So oftentimes people will say, you know, for somebody like Naveen to create a moonshot or to do something spectacular, that's not, that's not me. That's, that's for somebody who is a multi-billionaire or multi-millionaire or something like that. And um, and so with that, Naveen, you know, the, the very first thing I, I'm going to ask is for everybody here, can you tell us what a moonshot is? First of all, I want to thank you, Tab, for just being uh, for your kind words. I think, you know, you always are so kind and I know you mean them. But I think uh, a lot of the times it's so difficult to live up to the expectations that you set of me. Uh, so here I am. I will do my best to see if I can live up to that expectations for you again. Uh, so Moonshot to me is these are things that we look to and thinking they are so audacious that they are crazy ideas. They are so difficult, if not impossible to achieve. And what, we, what I've learned in the life is that never look at the problem, whether it can or cannot be done. Simply ask yourself, what has to happen? What problems will have to be solved for this to work? So whether it, you know, it doesn't matter when someone say, I wanna live on Venus. You don't, you don't say that will never happen. You simply say, what are the things that have to happen for us to be able to live on Venus, right? So you say, okay, you have to be able to leave Earth orbit. So you have to first find a way to get leave the Earth. Okay, that's one problem. Second problem is to leave once you get out of the Earth orbit to go all the way to Venus, okay? That's a second problem. The third is you have to be able to land on the Venus. All right, that's a third problem. The fourth thing is when you get there, how are you going to actually make a living? How are you going to grow the food on the moon? How are you going to grow the food on the Venus? And you start asking all those questions, right? And then you start to say, all right, now, now that we know there are four sets of problems, we say the, the problem number one, how to leave the Earth orbit. Well, guess what? We have done that many, many times. We know how to do that. It's called a rocket. So we say, great, that problem is solved. How do we go from the Earth orbit all the way to Venus? And we said, look, we have been to Mars and Venus is farther out, but look, we know how to go to the Mars and maybe there is some incrementally, slightly more challenging work we may have to do, but it doesn't seem like a very difficult task to do. We can probably get there. And then same thing, you say, how are you going to land? They said, look, we land on Mars and we tried three different ways. All of them work. A bouncing ball, we use the balloon, we use the crane and all of them work. And you know, maybe the atmosphere on the Venus is slightly thinner than Mars, but at least we know how to do that. And then comes down to how are you going to grow the food on the Venus if you're gonna live there? And that's where you start to actually, the part of learning about moonshot is about asking the right questions. The questions you ask is the problem you solve and just take this home. So I'm gonna repeat it. Whenever you're trying to solve a problem, be asking a different question than everyone has asked allows you to look at the problem so differently and come up with a solution that have never been possible. So instead of asking yourself, how are you going to grow the food on the Venus? What if you were to ask a slightly dif different question? Why do we eat food? Think like a two year old naive person. Why do we even eat food? And by simply asking that question, you say, oh, we need food because we need energy and we need nutrition. And suddenly you say, what are the different ways we can get energy? Plants get energy from photosynthesis, which is taking a sunlight and converting them to energy. There are many bacteria who grow up in a radioactive nuclear waste. What does that mean? That means they have figured out how to protect their DNA from radiation and use the radiation as a source of energy. Now, imagine if you can take that genetic material from those bacteria used CRISPR to modify our own gene. Now we become radiation resistant and we can now actually just use the radiation as a source of energy. So instead of saying, honey, do you want to go out and eat pizza? You say, honey, do you want to go out for a walk and get some radiation? And that's your dinner, right? Now, what I'm trying to say is just asking a different question allows you to look at the possibilities. 
that were never ever thought about it. And that is the crux of how you solve moonshot. And I think, uh, you know, Tab, I don't know if last time I mentioned that to you or not, I use a framework for every single time I start a company that I would call an audacious company. Ask myself, why this? Why now? Why me? And why this is really simple. You ask yourself backward, God forbid, I am actually successful in solving the problem that I set out to do. Would it help a billion people live a better life? And the reason you ask yourself that is anytime you can do anything that will improve 1 billion people's life, you can create a hundred billion or $500 billion company. But you don't wake up in the morning and say, I want to start a $500 billion company. What should I do? The making money is simply a byproduct of doing things that improve people's life. It's that simple. And that's how you focus on. So every day now I wake up and I'm gonna talk, later talk about Wyo, is the same thing, another moonshot I knew nothing about. And one of the things I also learned is when you become good at something, when you become an expert at anything, you become useless. You become incrementalist. That means the best you can do is to be 10% better than someone else, but you will never be 10 times better. To be 10 times better, you have to challenge the foundation of everything that experts have taken it for granted. That means to be a non-expert is the biggest asset you have. So every time someone says, how can you go out and do something in this industry? You know nothing about it. You say, that is my biggest asset is to, I know nothing about it. That is why I'm going to be the most dangerous person the industry has ever seen because I'm no longer bound by their thinking of what is not possible. So I, I love this. And, and one of the main objectives Naveen, is, is I, I you, you know, you, you, in the book, you talk about curiosity and imagination. Yes. Right? Yes. And, and, I, and I love that, you know, I, 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 I also tell myself, you know, I, I reached about four years old and then that part of me just stuck with me forever. Like I, 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 it's never left. And, and I love that. And when I, when I run into people that haven't lost that or have that or regained it or whatever, it's, there's a kindred spirit. Right? It's like, oh, you, you know, you're, you're thinking about <laughs> crazy things. And, and so, you know, in your book, and I love it because it almost it sounds like a it sounds like a joke. A mechanic, a tattoo artist, and a dentist walk into a bar. But but it, that's what it was. It was a tattoo artist, a mechanic, and a dentist that took part in the X Prize, right? And they were a finalist. And if I remember right, yep. none of them really had any experience in it's that, like but they created a machine that was twice as Product. Can, you, can you just talk yep. about that? Because to me, that's the thing is like yep. average people doing extraordinary things. And I think it is simply about looking at the problem differently than what anyone has done. And so I think what Tab is referring to is when there was, remember the last time when there was an oil spill in the Gulf, right? Everyone that was going out there, British Petroleum had a massive amount of oil spill and they were using exactly the same equipment that Axon Valdez used when there was a, uh, it's actually the oil spill in Alaska. And these guys thought, oh my God, you know, this X Prize set up a prize and said, this is going to, we're gonna give away a million dollars, $1.5 million, who can come up with an equipment that is twice as good than what they're using uh, currently in the, uh, for uh, collecting the uh, oil that is up on the uh, surface of the water. And this guy, literally a mechanic is getting a tattoo in his arm and the tattoo artist asked the mechanic and say, hey, you are a mechanic. There's one and a half million dollars we can have if you can build something that is going to be better in collecting the oil. And he said, you know, dude, I'm thinking about it. The oil only comes out when there is a, they do the drilling and I'm telling you, my dentist does a lot of drilling. He probably knows a lot about drilling. And we're gonna go ask him and see if we can come up with a way to come up with this machine. And they literally came together and they thought, oh my God, it is the water, the oil is on the surface because it never goes down. It's right on the surface. Maybe they can build a ski like thing and they'll have a vacuum cleaner that will suck up the oil and it starts collecting the oil just by using the ski and the uh, vacuum cleaner. And that turned out to be twice as good as what they were using with all the experts in the world. 
And that to me was just a thinking like, it's a problem that is something completely different than what all the experts have always thought. And that, by the way, applies in every industry. It doesn't have to be a space industry. It doesn't have to be the oil industry. It can be in any industry. And this is about the way of thinking, what I call the mindset. Once you change your mindset of how you think, every problem starts to feel like a problem that you can solve. The only thing that you can't solve is the one that you believe you can solve. The minute you think you can't do something, it makes it impossible for you to do it, not for anyone else to do it. And that is really the thing. And I think that, as you mentioned about curiosity, this, by the way, I don't know how many of you are here are parents. One of the things that I learned about parenting and I have, by the way, Tab, I don't know if I ever told you, but I have three children and all three of them are amazingly great entrepreneurs. Uh, not that they had much of a choice because that's the only thing that dad possibly could teach them that I didn't have much to teach them otherwise. <laughs> My oldest uh, started a company, again, focused on the problem that he saw that all the young people who graduate have a couple of problems. The first problem he saw was they get a job, they can probably move into an apartment and every apartment owner will ask them, hey, do you have a, I need a deposit the first month, last month and a security deposit. And every young kid will say, I have no money to give you a deposit, but I can pay the rent. So he came up with an idea, what if we can build a company that will actually get a $5 a month insurance to the landlord. And so landlord becomes insured for the first month, last month and the security deposit. And now you can move in and there's no other cost. And that company that he built. And then second thing he realized was every time the people were paying rent, they were just saying, oh my God, I'm just wasting my money. I get nothing for it. I just keep giving money away every, every month. And he says, wow, what if I can create a product that will allow them to earn point for every time they pay a rent and they can use that point to use for airlines, hotel, or use the point to pay the rent themselves. And that company, <clears throat> by the way, became this company called Built. It, he built a credit card with Wells Fargo and MasterCard where you can now pay your rent using a credit card. Landlord gets full money, no credit card fees, no annual fee, and no credit charge. That means you put $5,000, landlord gets a full $5,000. And guess what? You earn the point that you can use on one-to-one -one on any airlines. The reason I mentioned is he had no idea about this industry, but he saw the problem and he was able to go do that. He started that company a year ago. He just processed over a billion dollar worth of transaction and just signed a deal where he's getting an investment at $1.5 billion valuation for a company he started a year ago. Right. Our daughter, by the way, he went to Wharton. Our daughter went to Stanford, the Stanford STEM fellow, Stanford Mayfield fellow. She cared about solving the women's problem. First company she started was a company called Pymetrics for actually using AI to remove the gender bias. She said, that's good enough. I'm going to now start a company around women's health. And every one of you, by the way, should go check it out. Company called Avi, E-V-V-Y. It is a vaginal microbiome company. It is all about all women's health. So if you are a, a male, Buy it for your wife, buy it for your daughter. If you are a woman, buy it for yourself, buy it for your daughter. <laughs> but everyone should go check out every. It is an unbelievable company. Now she's solving all the women's health problems. Our youngest one also went to Stanford and he's a Schwarzman scholar. And he saw the problem, that same problem, that when people buy house, they have a problem paying mortgage because their mortgage keeps getting resold. And then every, every time, six months later, here's a new owner, you're gonna send the mortgage payment. So they automated everything and they now have someone, they actually do all the customer service for all mortgages. You make the payment to them and they take care of all the back end work automatically, right? So my point is finding a problem that improves people's life and every one of them is now creating a company around solving that problem. The reason I mentioned that is that what we did right was creating the intellectual curiosity. And in my opinion, as parents, our job is not to take them to the water and make them drink. Our job is to make them thirsty because when you make them thirsty, they will find their own water and they will drink. How do you make someone thirsty? You give them the curiosity. Once you make someone intellectually curious, they can never ever stop learning because they always say, 
Why does it have to be this way? Why does it does not work this way? Why can I do this to make this work, right? And that curiosity will constantly push the humanity forward. And when you do that, when you push the humanity forward and you help millions of people live a better life, you create hundreds of millions of dollars of companies. And that's the fundamental thing that every one of us to learn is to always be curious. It, never let your imagination die. You, the day you stop imagining, the day you stop learning is the day you die. Then you live a life of a zombie, right? And the other thing that, Deb, I was going to just mention that as an entrepreneur, one thing we are all scared of is that ups and downs of life that we all have. And we all get scared and think this is too risky for me. And what I realized in life was that if you're going to be alive, the only way you know you are alive is because you have a heartbeat. Because when, what happens when you are lying down? Doctor comes and checks your pulse to say, do you still have a heartbeat? And when you have a heartbeat, you know they are alive. And when you don't know heartbeat, you're dead. What does a heartbeat look like? Up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. When it's smooth, you're dead. So if you're looking for a life that is a smooth life, you're looking to live a life of a dead person. If your life is not having ups and downs, you're not living. You're living, you're dying, and you're probably dead, and you just don't know that. As I think someone said, a lot of people die when they are 22. They just don't get into the coffin until they're 75. Yeah. <laughs> but they're dead. And yeah. that's not the life you want to ever live. Yeah, and, and, I, and I love it. And, and, you know, one of the things, Naveen, is, is you know, pe people might be thinking, oh, you know, it's great. Look, Naveen's done these things. His kids have done these things. You know, great genes, great all this stuff. It, what I would say to you on a, on a personal note is a lot of you know me. I'm an average guy. I started a cybersecurity firm and, and I've, been, I've, been in, I've been doing it for 12 years. I, I, know, I know enough about, and, and Naveen can probably appreciate this, if somebody goes deep and says, let's talk about the microbiome of your gut, he's going to be able to talk about this much, and then he's going to be like, I'm out. I, I can't go any deeper than that because I'm, I'm not, I don't have the depth that my people do. So when I talk to people about cybersecurity, I, I know enough to create this business without knowing, and I didn't know enough about what I was doing when I came into it, right? I, and I think that's the key, is we don't have to look and say, I, I'm not a scientist, therefore I can't do that particular thing. And, in, and, and I wanna talk, I, I wanna lead into to Viome, but in the book that he has, he, you, know, you, you talk about um, you know, uh, President Obama wanting to like, become the world leader in science, and you felt that he had, you know, that, that an area that he fell flat on was that he once again returned to the people that had that specific area of expertise instead of coming out and looking to entrepreneurs or other people and saying, create that. So when you look at all the different things that you've done and, and you know, Moon Express is, I, I, I would love to know more about it, but, sure. but biome, is, biome is the thing that when, when, you know, every time I turn around, Naveen, it, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm one of your biggest cheerleaders. I mean, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on social media. Every time something comes up, I'm like that. Not, not because of my affinity and love for you, but because I, I do have that. Don't get me wrong, but it's because of, of what Biome has done for me. So, can you talk a little bit about like that pathway? Yeah, yeah. so I think, you know, the, I started Viome about um, almost seven years ago with a fundamental belief that we as humans don't have to suffer from chronic diseases. Unlike the infectious diseases, like, you know, whether we are currently suffering from COVID, you and I have no choice. We catch infection and that is such is life. But we don't, we don't catch diabetes. We don't wake up in the morning and say, honey, I was out with the boys last night. I think I might have caught diabetes. You don't catch diabetes. You don't catch heart disease. You don't, in fact, they're not infectious diseases. These are the diseases you develop over a long period of time, whether it's a depression or anxiety, whether it is you know, cancer or whether it is obesity. 
So all these diseases are something we can actually prevent and reverse. And that was my fundamental belief was if we can digitize the human body, understand exactly what is going on, what is the biochemical activities happening in each person's body, we'll be able to go very, very specifically what is wrong with each individual, not everyone for that person, and we'll be able to actually solve that problem. And with that, what we did is, and by the way, this is a test that we are launching, it's called full body intelligence. And this is something Tab, I'm just showing the, for the first time. I just got this boss yesterday. It's launching in seven days. So seven days from now, you'll be able to buy this thing called full body intelligence. Now, what it does is it analyzes your saliva. So the test that uh, Tab is talking about that he did was called health intelligence. And that analyzes your blood, a few drops of your blood and your touch of your stool. So it analyzes your gut microbiome and the, what it's doing in your blood to be able to see how the human host and the microbiome were interacting with each other. Now with this new test, we start with the top of the tube. So we analyze your saliva, your oral microbiome, and what, the, what your human genes are expressed in your saliva. Then we go to the bottom of the tube, we analyze your stool, and then we go on the other side of the tube and we analyze your blood. And when we get all of that information, here is what we tell you. First of all, we give you everything, your insights into your body. What is your biological age? That means how old are you really from the biological perspective? Just to give you an idea, I am 63 years old and my biological age is now down to 50. And my hope is by the time I'm 70, my biological age will come down to 40. So my wife will always think that she married a young man. So she didn't have to look out for a young man anymore, right? And that's I constantly keep working on the biological age. It tells you your immune health. That means how well are you protected if there is cold, flu, or COVID that you're going to get caught into it. It gives you your gut health. It gives you your heart health. It gives you your metabolic health. It gives you your brain health, your cognitive health, your oral health. And under each one of them, you get whole, you get you, by the way, your you know, inflammation response health and on and on and on. It tells you your dental health, your gum health, and all. And then after we give you everything that's happening in your body, we don't say, and good luck. We now tell you exactly what you should be doing to improve your health. So we say, hey, here are the foods you should not eat, and here is why. So we say, hey, Tab, we notice that there's too much of sulfide you're producing in your gut. That is causing a lot of infl inflammation in your gut. You should be eating a lot of broccoli or Brussels sprout right now because they contain a lot of sulfate that is producing into sulfide. Don't eat a spinach, even though Popeye told you spinach is healthy, it's not good for you right now because we are noticing that your oxalic pathways are not very active. And if you eat a spinach, which is high in oxalate, you're gonna end up getting a kidney stone. And by the way, don't, you may think it's the garlic that might be giving you the bad breath. You have lots of polyamines production. Don't eat tofu because tofu is the one that's gonna give you a bad breath, not, not necessarily the garlic, right? We go back, you know, for example, don't eat avocado right now. You may think avocado is healthy for everyone, but not for you because your uric acid production is too high. And then we go back and say, here are the foods you should be eating and here is why. And then we say, don't take vitamin B3 right now because your uric acid production is high. Don't take curcumin right now because your bile acid is production is too high. But you do need every single day, you should be taking about 22 milligram of elderberry. You should take 29 milligram of berberin. You should take 79 milligram of uh, amylase. You do need vitamin B6, but you don't need the vitamin D. And we literally go through every vitamin, every mineral, every food extract, every digestive enzyme, every amino acid, every probiotic, every prebiotic, and we tell you what you need. And then we go a step further. We actually make them for you with only those ingredients in that quantity and ship them off to you. There is no pre-made stuff. We literally make those capsules for each individual like a compounding pharmacy and ship it to you. And that's literally what happens. So, so this is my box. Just what you need, nothing that you don't. And every time you do a test, you get these capsules, just what you need, nothing that you don't, made just for you. And you get one stick pack that you actually get all of your probiotics and prebiotics. And then you are done for the day, all the nutrition that your body needs. 
Now, amazing thing is now that we have analyzed almost half a million people, people who actually follow our food recommendations that take our supplements, the clinically, their depression came down by 36%. Their IBS-like symptom, which is stomach ache and you know, the bloating, 40%. Their anxiety by 32%. Their HbA1c came down by 30%. People tell us they sleep better. People tell us they no longer have digestive issue, constipation or bloating or, uh, you know, uh, or burping. People tell us they actually don't have acne or eczema. People tell us they have more energy. They don't have brain fog. They lose weight. I've lost 25 pounds. And again, I'm not telling you that this will happen to each one of you because it's not the food that's good or bad. Is it good for you or bad for you? Not the food is good or bad. It's for you or not. That's it. So my point I'm trying to make is that what Hippocrates said 2,500 years ago, if you remember Hippocrates, mm -hmm. a Greek doctor, he says, all diseases begin in the gut. Let food be thy medicine. Let thy medicine be the food. One man's food is another man's poison. And that is really what we are trying to do is to not personalize it for each individual rather than everyone should not, everyone should eat avocado, everyone should eat green stuff, everyone should eat uh, broccoli, everyone should eat this. We simply say, no, those foods are not good for you right now. And they're not forever. When you read, when you follow the recommendation and you do a test again six months later, we say, you know what? You know, our body has completely changed now. You can eat broccoli, but you should eat, uh, for example, carrot now. And here is why. Right? So as your body is changing, we're constantly retuning and readapting it for you. Your supplements change, your foods change. And that really is about tuning your body as your body is aging, as your body is changing, to constantly keep tuning it, just like you tune your car once a year, you tune your body twice a year. Yeah. And, and, and I, I mean this somewhat tongue-in-cheek i was very excited to see that kombucha was a, a void for me I, I was like i never have to drink that kombucha again because it's an avoid uh, unless it becomes a superfood next and then i will be cursing the name of naveen that i have okay. kombucha. Hey, so naveen one of the one of the things and and you know we're at, at about in about nine minutes we're gonna we're gonna see yeah. who has questions right and we're gonna mm -hmm. we'll go to We'll, we'll go in order in a in somewhat of an order of doing that, but okay. but one of the things that that I really want to drive home is this idea to people that 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 you don't have to be Naveen Jain or or Bill Gates or anybody like that to to really start to think about a moonshot, right? Yes, what, what was the what was the first time when you went? Wow, I. I I mean, when you started to get that feeling like, like you could do something unique. But let me tell you actually a very easier way of answering that question, which is it's easier to solve a big problem than to solve a small problem. Let me tell you why. So when you tell someone, I'm going to go out and do something that is going to make the chronic diseases disappear from the you know, face of this earth. If we are successful, we can eliminate the chronic diseases and cancer from the, from the humanity. Now, guess what happens? The best and the brightest in the world want to solve that problem. Best and the brightest want to work on the toughest problem. And the people who are successful, they want to create a legend for themselves. And they want to work on legendary things, right? And that is what happened. So when I said I'm going to focus on this problem, I was able to hire the global head of R&D from GSK. I was able to hire the head of IBM Watson uh, to do our AI. I was able to hire the chief science guy who was actually developed the technology that I'm using at Los Alamos National Lab, right? And the interesting thing is these, once you assemble a great team because you're working on something these people want to solve, and plus it is a massive market. Every VC wants to invest in you because you have a great idea and now you have a great team. Suddenly the money comes to you. So you don't have to be rich. You just have to believe here is how we can solve this problem. Here is why we can solve this problem. And I, you know, just to talk about the cancer again, I lost my dad to uh, cancer. And to me, it was meaningful for us, me to be able to solve that problem. And by the way, this is a product that's gonna be launching in four weeks on July 15th. First cancer detect. Mm. Literally you spit in a tube and we'll be able to tell you if you have the earliest possible sign of oral cancer and throat cancer. That's where we started. Mouth, 
throat and now we're going down, we're doing the esophageal cancer, breast cancer, we're going down to stomach cancer, colorectal cancer, pancreatic cancer, prostate cancer, to be able to diagnose them very, very early. And our next step is to do a pre-cancerous -pre stage. That means you have a lesion that's not cancerous yet, but it, it will to find the colon polyps before they become a cancer. And our hope really is to actually eliminate cancer from ever happening. So they detect them before they become cancers so you can get them removed before they actually cause grief in your body. And now I would have never thought, I mean, seven years ago, someone who knows nothing about science, nothing about healthcare, that one day I will be building a product that will actually be detecting the early stage cancer or helping people live a disease-free life. And to me, that is really why I believe you don't have to have money. You just have to have conviction. And when you have conviction, you can hire the people who are very successful because with your conviction, they will want to come and want to work on that audacious moonshot project. And when you have a team and an audacious idea, money will come because every VC wants to never want to miss out. Be the guy who, who said, I won't invest in this. Yeah. So I, I want to I want to tell a quick, quick, quick story. So a, a lot of this for everybody is starting to train your your mind to to have the right mindset, to think with that curiosity, to 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 be inquisitive, to to do that. And so I, I've been listening to this um, and, and I'm 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 in the dentist chair, I'm, you know, and and. And I have this tooth right here and the guy is just working it right back and forth, back and forth. And I'm trying to listen, right? And I'm trying to pay attention. And I walk out and this is the kind of thing I want people to think about. I walk out, this whole side of my face is just numb. And I, I, I no longer had a tooth right here. And the thought came to me was, you know, if my body was able to grow a tooth once as a child, lose it, and then grow another tooth. Yep. Why can't my body grow another tooth again? Now yep. I say that because I would. I am confident I would not have had that thought had I not opened my mind up to to it. And so that those are the kind of you know I think those are the kind of things that that we need people to to do that to to really think about. And so so Naveen, you know, I I, I don't. I mean I I don't want to like oversell it right but i i have to tell everybody you know i i read a lot and and to me um a premise of a book is that doesn't make me when i'm done with it do do i have more questions than answers um and, and that's what this does so I, I would encourage people to get it moonshots and in, in case you didn't catch that held up um, Naveen, we've got like two minutes before we're going to break off to questions. Do you have any, do you have any last, and you can take as much time as you want, but I'm going to recoup it at the end, just so you know. Well, I, again, I, I think, Tab, I think I can, you know, I'd rather answer the people's question because I can go on and on, give you the monologue of all the different lessons that I've learned in life about various things. But let's go ahead and take the next question and see if we can uh, use that question to uh, talk about that you know, perfect. new set of uh, yeah. Perfect, perfect. So what we're going to do, and th again, this is the first time we've done this format, so we're going to we're going to roll with the punches here. So we we want to first go to uh, El Paso um, and let El Paso ask uh, a question or two, maybe maybe two questions, and then then we'll go we'll, then we'll go into uh, uh scottsdale so wherever el paso wherever you're at unmute and join us ruben's new to technology <laughs> um so um hey there you are ruben hey um so naveen um we have uh, very little aerospace here but we have a lot of manufacturing mm -hmm. um how can, well, I, I feel like I already know the answer, but I want to hear from you. <laughs> how, can, yeah. how can we get more aerospace companies interested in coming over here? Well, I think that, you know, again, it's not about bringing the aer aerospace industry or any industry there. The fundamental question you have to ask yourself is, why would they want to come there? 
what atmosphere environment you want to create for them, for them to be interested. So you don't have to sell anything. They would want to come there because you have to say, look, the things that you need most for aerospace is the material manufacturing. We do it here that it reduces your supply chain issues. We will go ahead and actually make sure the companies who are locally here, they will get the first priority on the things that we manufacture here. And that's the reason you want to be here because if you're not, there are always going to be supply chain shortages. So any company who is not here is going to suffer from that. That means make a compelling reason for them to be there rather than you trying to sell them or why they should be there, right? So I think make it so easy for them to say, hey, how can I come there? Because that is where all the action is happening. That is where, all, that is where my company can succeed better than where it is today. So that means come up with the right reason for any, any company or anyone to be there, uh, whether it is tax haven, whether it is, most people would not come for taxes in general, unless they feel it is best for the company to do that. So find a reason why aerospace company, if they were there in your neighborhood, is likely to be more successful than if they were in some other area. Excellent. R Ruben, do you, do, you have, do you all have another question? Yeah, we have one more. Yeah. This is Tim. Oh, hi guys. Um, so Naveen, uh, listening to you, it seems like you just have tons of like processes and, met and methods that you use to develop questions, identify problems that resonate across different populations, cultures, and things like that. So I would like to ask you, if someone wanted to learn the mindset to mm -hmm. turn, to create processes and frameworks so they can identify or they can you know, identify problems and take action the way that you do, what would you suggest that they do? Like how would someone learn to break down a process and create a questioning methodology and framework that you use? Think like a two-year-old. That's probably the right way to think about it. Think like a two-year-old. Every time you tell, you tell them something, first thing, what do they say? Why, dad? Why? 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 And they keep asking you why until they actually you get say there is no more why to be answered here, right? Point is you always question everything that you see. You always ask yourself, instead of saying it can't be done, you say, imagine if it can be done, what would the world look like? Can you describe the world if this problem could be solved? One of the things that kids are, have is amazing amount of creativity when they are young and they lose their creativity, creativity as they get older because as we get older, we are so much worried about, oh my God, that's really a dumb question. If I ask somebody, going to say, you're just a complete moron. A kid never thinks that way. A kid will ask any question that comes to them and that's how they learn. And as we become adult, we stop learning because we are so worried about what will people think of it. And I, and I, what I do is I go to the scientists and I ask them the absolutely the most naive question. And in their mind, that was the best question they had never been asked. Or you ask them the question that they would say that would never work. And then you constantly keep asking them, why would that never work? And then you actually, it turns out by the time they are done answering the question, they themselves will come back and say, I think it just might work. And that is the trick is to be able to keep pushing them that why do they believe it can't work? And they will come up with the answer why it will work. And, and I think that's brilliant because, you know, I, I had something like that happen to me the other day, Naveen, and, and, you know, it started off with, it's not, that can't work, that can't happen to, you know, maybe if we try this. And I just remember kind of giggling inside, yeah. thinking to myself, I, I, I got them hooked. Yeah, right. Exactly. And, and I just felt that hook sink in. So, so I appreciate that. Hey, let's um, th thanks, uh, Ruben and, and El Paso, Texas, not anywhere else in case Ruben thought I forgot. Uh, <laughs> Scottsdale, um, Heather, do you, do, do you have any, does your group have any questions? Yes, we have a question. Yeah, I would love to have the insight uh, with me from the standpoint of out west here. We've been dealing with severe drought situation for the better part of the last 20, 25 years. Mm -hmm. but then out by the Mississippi River, there's mm -hmm. constant flooding that goes on. So mm -hmm. I would 
know why, with all the technology that we have in this on the planet, that we can't figure out how to do a water pipeline from the abundance that they have over in Mississippi and and and, and ship that over to the West. And uh, maybe even create a power source out of it because that's the way to you know, harness the energy through a pipeline in a you know in a converged sense. So I'm just curious, have you ever done anything in that realm? Well, I have not done it, but doesn't mean I can't do what I won't do or you can't do what you won't do. <laughs> but, uh, but the point is, it is something you have to ask yourself that you already think of one solution. What are the other possible solutions you could have? I mean, do you need to have that much heat? What if you could put the mirrors up in the space that will reflect the sun back so it won't be actually coming down to earth, right? Can you put the mirrors up over Scottsdale where you won't actually get the sun to create the drought and maybe you will have less sun? And what if you can create that things where you actually could get the clouds to be moving towards Scottsdale, pouring rain there so you won't have to have worry about having a drought? But the question really comes down to is, if you have abundant, the point is the planet Earth is full of water. How could that possibly be when a planet has so much of it, abundance of it, there are portions of the people who are actually don't have it. It's like having a massive amount of fields in Midwest and the people in the West are dying from having hunger because there is no food. So that problem is a simply a supply chain problem that got to be able to solve, whether it is a pipeline or whether it's actually giving the reflecting the mirror onto the Mississippi. So they evaporates all the water from there that they're flooding on. And the water when it evaporates comes up in a cloud and you use the fan to blow it over the Scots there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I mean, I'm just saying a point is no. you may laugh at it, but there is a solution, something like that, that could exist. Well, you, th that whole idea of like, like bringing clouds to Scottsdale, yeah. I mean, I'm like, well, if you could do that, you could actually like maybe bring clouds over a certain part of the area, yeah. let yeah. it rain so Scottsdale can stay sunny and bright, but you got a little, you got a little pocket of rain. Yeah. And my point is, again, it is very, very possible. I mean, none of these things on the surface, they sound like a crazy idea. But remember, the day before a breakthrough, it's a crazy idea. The day before, day after the breakthrough, it's an obvious idea. <laughs> Yeah. And, and, and here in Seattle, you know, you can do the same thing with sun. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> we, need more, we need a little more sun. Um, Heather, do you have any more, do you have any more questions there? I don't think so, but that was a really good, I like that. Awesome. It was really hey, So, so Catherine. Desalination too is huge. Yeah. You know, just learn yeah. with these radios. Like yeah. Scottsdale, the ocean is a lot faster yeah. than trying to bring it down. So. Are there any, are there any questions? Yeah. That, Oh, I have a question, Tad. Okay, we go ahead. Go, go ahead and have a seat. AJ, go ahead and ask a, your question. Okay, uh, Naveen, I have like a, a moonshot because, like, I'm a comedian and I have kidney disease, and I kind of mm -hmm. travel and work with these kidney foundations. Mm -hmm. And my goal is to kind of like cure disease through comedy, yeah. but um how would you kind of like begin kind of like your moonshot like if you had an idea like how would you what are those first couple of steps for building that well so first of all is that you know it has to have a good scientific base for you to do that and all you have to show is show people that when people are laughing and people are happy the, whatever drugs they are taking they are more effective and we know half of the drug efficacy comes from placebo, I mean, we all know, why do we always compare against placebo? Because placebo is a drug. And even if laughing is simply a placebo, as long as it works, it's a drug. And you can show people who go to comedy and people who don't, and they recover faster, suddenly you have found a drug that works and it has no side effect other than actually makes you feel better, right? So my point is, it again, go back and think like a scientist and say, hey, what if we can show whether people are coming to my comedy and people who don't and people who come there with this disease actually have a better re record of not falling sick or have a better record of actually getting cured faster than the people who don't. 
suddenly you have a system that actually you can go out and even get FDA to approve it because you now you have shown it is better than a placebo. And 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 AJ, um, AJ, I, I actually did listen to Naveen last time we spoke when he talked about the the four questions that he asks himself. The you know why this? Why, why now? Why me? Why me? Why this? Why now? And and can it impact a billion yep. people? And you know, I that's something that I often will go back to. You know, I I'll be honest that that last one is is still a mindset thing for me. Like, do I need to do I need to impact a billion? But um, I I can appreciate that. So um, we probably have time for a couple more. Do you have a question that you want yeah. to ask? Hi, how are you? Very good, thank you. <laughs> I'm Joy. By the way, in 2004, when you were at Intellius, I actually did my first presentation ever for VCs, ever. You guys didn't go with my idea, but I'm still back here. <laughs> 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 I'm just thinking about that. But um, yeah, um, as an entrepreneur, we have a lot of ideas. We come, you know, we have like all of these things that come and just haunt us, you know, for quite a while. How do you narrow your focus on what to pursue first? Wow. Very, very good question. That is thing what I call, are you truly obsessed about solving that problem? So there is the, so first thing I tell people is when you wake up in the morning and you don't jump out of the bed, whatever you're doing, you should quit right that day because that is not your calling. When you find your calling, you will never be lying down in the bed when you wake up, you'll be jumping out with joy. So find something that you're willing to die for and then live for it. And what I find is when you find your true obsession and if you continue pursuing that, everything else falls in line, right? So it's not about having a great idea. It is about having the obsession to pursue that great idea, right? So entrepreneurs actually execute. They don't think about what to do. They go out and do it. And that's the difference between human beings who complain the innovators who come up with ideas and entrepreneurs who go out and actually take action. So if you're not taking an action, you're not an entrepreneur, you're simply a dreamer, right? When you take action is when you become an entrepreneur. Excellent. Hey, do, do we have time for two more questions, Naveen? Sure, go for it. Okay, so Angeli, is, I don't know if that's how you say it, but um, I saw your hand up, so I'm gonna go with you and then, and then following that, let's have Edward and then we'll, We'll move forward forward from there. Right. Okay. So uh, my name is Angeli Angeli here in Lake Pleasant, Arizona. And I do agree with you that um, that curiosity is very important. At the same time, uh, with the beginning of any dream, with the beginning of a person waking up in the morning, there is always the need for basic necessities mm -hmm. and with a business cash flow. Yep. Okay. That is one of the biggest issues for a company. So until there is bigger actions with the VC to find that person that wants to do that thing, you survived with $5 in your pocket. How did you get your stomach filled and continue with cash flow until you were able to make it into the next steps? Like anything else, you know, in a snowball, all you have to do is get the ball start rolling down and it will keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger as it goes down, but it's not going to start bigger. So when I came to, uh, when I came to United States with absolutely nothing, barely spoke the language, I got a job that paid me $3 an hour. And guess what? That was not much. I made a total of $500 in a month, could not find a place to live. Guess what I did? I lived with six people in one single unit. And six of us shared that. Guess what? We had one car that six of us shared. Guess, you know, so it's really about getting started. That allowed me to meet new people that I would not have met but for this job. And as I started to learn that one of the person I met said, you're so bright. Maybe you should go to Silicon Valley and maybe there are people like you who can thrive there. You will never be able to thrive in New Jersey because people like you will never be appreciated in New Jersey. And, and he made the introduction to someone in, in Silicon Valley. And that's where I ended up in Silicon Valley. And then I worked for a company and that company started to do well. And the company was going bankrupt. As I was learning, it 
the guy, somebody called me and said, you know this stuff that in a previous company, we need exactly that knowledge here. And that literally what, you know, so my point is in a life, you can't plan everything that's going to happen to you. But once you take the first step towards life, the next step becomes clear. You don't want to be afraid of where the limits are. And I think like my mom used to always tell me that, hey, son, you are, you know, you can do anything you want. The sky is the limit. And she said right there, the limit for me, the sky is the limit. And later I realized as I grew older that there is no such thing as sky. The sky is the figment of our imagination. And when we go up there and we realize there was no sky, we created that sky as if that was my border of what I can't cross. And imagine how many of these skies we create in our own life. I am a brown guy who does not speak well with a thick accent English that will never be able to do that. Don't care, that is someone else's problem. I get so comfortable who I am. And when you start to fall in love with yourself, the world will fall in love with you. But you have to love yourself first. You have to believe in yourself first. You can't let someone else tell you what you can't do. Only you have that right to tell yourself that you can't do it. No one else has that right to tell you that. Yeah. And, and, and you know, the, the, the thing I would add on to that is, because I've been there, is, is, is patience. It's patience and it's persistence. That's and the true. consistency, it's just... Just sticking with it, and, and like Naveen says, just believing in yourself. So, so thank you. And, and we're, and, and I know we're over time, Naveen. So uh, thank you. But Edward, we said one more, and you're you're the go for it. You're the final. All right, I'm privileged for that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Naveen, and thank you, Tab. Um, this has been awesome. And uh, one one question that I had is more. I'm intrigued with the biome the biome product. Um, so in particular, my wife has serious food sensitivity issues. Mm -hmm. And like, she got this list and she sensitive yep. to meat and to like chicken and all kinds of stuff to where like, I don't even want to take it anymore. Cause I'm like scared of what if that happens mm -hmm. to me. Like I love meat. <laughs> right. yep. So is the blood test food sensitivity no. uh, going to be the same as your product or, or no. how does that differ? So so my point is, again, at the end of the day, the test they call food sensitivity test is actually a misnomer. It has nothing to do with food sensitivity. This is how marketing works. They're simply looking for IgG and IgG is simply an antibody to the food. So if you have a leaky gut, whatever food you eat is going to end up developing an antibody because if you have a leaky gut, food you eat goes into the blood and the immune system creates antibody to it. So it simply tells you, you are eating that food, not you're sensitive to that food. And that's the marketing. So if you think about, it is not food sensitivity. That's how the salespeople figured out how to sell the thing to you. It is simply an antibody that's developed for that food. And that will go away by the way, if you don't stop, you stop eating that food for six months, your antibody will go away and you don't, you're not, suddenly you're no longer sensitive to it. It is just, you were never sensitive to, to begin with, right? So what we do is we look at the stuff and say, you have a leaky gut, you need to fix that. And that we start to fix the root cause of why do you have a leaky gut? You have inflammation in your gut, let's fix that, right? So point we try to do is to look at the body at the root cause and say, let's fix the underlying root causes of what is going on. And when you fix that, the things we call symptoms or the things we call diseases are simply what I call whack a mole. When you get out of the inflammation, all these things just go away rather than you whack a mole here, it pops up here. You whack it here, it pops up here. And that is not what you want. You want to solve the underlying issues. And that's at why that's what we focus on. Beautiful. And then last question, can we get yeah. a link of how to get your product? Just go to yom.com, V-I-O-M-E.com. And I will put that in the yeah. chat right here. Uh, there you have it. There you go. Awesome. And, and th Naveen, Naveen, thank you. Um, it, people just stick around. Naveen, you can stick around, but no, that's fine. Thanks a lot, but, Dave. I really appreciate it. And by the way, thank you very much for giving me time to uh, share my thoughts with you. And if you have any question ever, uh, here is my email. I'm going to give it to you. And yes. it's naveen at Um And reach out to me anytime and you want. And someday I want to sign you. book. That's there, that's there you go, Ted. Uh, we'll be happy to do that. Thanks. All right. Lot. And thank you, Naveen. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye. Appreciate thank it. You. Bye. Bye bye. So I want to I want to finish up everybody with with something. So um, I met Naveen years ago, um, and 
I was at a I was at a conference and he was the only person there that was out talking just amongst everybody, just speaking to people. And he was the only one that was a multi-billionaire. He was the only one that was a billionaire. So um, it was very, very special to have him speak to us. One of the things that we that that we're trying to do here is we're trying to bring not only the opportunity to network together, but but bring the the highest quality individuals to to you. And and so Naveen was was one of the highest qualities we could we could bring to you. Next month, I think it's the 26th, where it'll be, we'll be doing the same thing. And it'll be with uh, Coach Burt. And he's a pretty phenomenal guy too. So if you'd like to be part of that, send us a message. We're gonna, you're gonna find, you're gonna hear about us broadcasting the snot out of that anyway. But, but just be that aware of that. The other thing is, is one of the things that we want to do. And again, as I mentioned at the beginning of this, this whole thing is is trial by error. What we're doing today, you know, Scottsdale Live, El Paso here, and then people online. Ultimately, our big vision if you want to talk about moonshots, is to have these pods all over the country. So if you're interested in doing a pod all over the country or at one place, let us know because we'd love to have you do this too. But the other thing is, is um, we're going to do a breakout here. You can stick around, not stick around. The idea in our head, and you know how it is, you have an idea and whether or not it actually comes out to work, two different things. But we're going to do these breakouts, and it's an opportunity for you to get to know other people that are on the line, on here. So if you're in Scottsdale, you're in El Paso, sorry, or Seattle, you talk amongst yourself. But the rest of you, it's an opportunity to talk about the things that you learned. See if maybe maybe there's somebody in there that you're looking at, like, man, you know, that person's smart. I'd like to maybe do some work with them or just network. It's an opportunity to do that. So so stick around if you want to do that, Catherine. You're going to break people up. Is that right? Right She's now. going to stop the recording right now. And, um, and what I would what I would say to people, 